everybody. Welcome to Cloud Wars Live. We're digging into the digital revolution and the remarkable changes going on in the business world around us today. One of the things that we see happening is that while technology is more important than it's ever been before, it can't be the type of thing that consumes so much time of business leaders and IT leaders mucking around with this stuff that should now be automated or done in a better, smarter way because those business people have to be able to focus on dazzling their customers, growing their revenue, and creating great new products and services. So to achieve that, they're working with world-class technology partners whose capabilities can span everything from co-location to the edge, to the cloud, to on-premise, and everywhere in between. That's going to allow those businesses to be able to extract all their data from all those locations in a unified way and have it become the lifeblood of what they need to do to succeed in the digital economy. HPE GreenLake has become a world-class leader in spanning all those different environments, simplifying what's needed for their customers and giving them the power of that data to become leaders in their field going forward. And we're delighted today to have Robert Christensen, who's the Vice President of Strategy within the office of the CTO, here to talk to us about the new types of business value that HPE GreenLake is creating. Robert, welcome to Cloud Wars Live. It's great to have you. Hey, Bob, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, Robert, uh, you know, we, we hear so many companies today in the tech industry saying, oh, yeah, you know, we got the edge, we got this, we have all that. But I, I, I'm not sure it really uh, bears out uh, in, the, in the final take here. So what is the cloud to edge story that is unique to what HPE GreenLake is doing? That's a great question. You know, what's, wh why do we exist and why should you care, right? It's the classic marketing sales message, you know? So I, I really believe passionately um, that the GreenLake story, HPE GreenLake story is the perfect solution to a really interesting problem. And you have to understand what the problem is before I can, can tell you what the value is. And the problem is this, um, let me give you, tell you a story. Uh, I came over with the acquisition with a company called Cloud Technology Partners, CTP. We got started back in the early 2011, 2012. And myself and a bunch of other folks, we ran this global um, uh, delivery of 700 plus all-in cloud migrations to the hyperscalers, right? So this was the mass early adoption of cloud. We did all of the new um, really heavy lifting around security and governance and compliance and data motions and stuff like that. I ran the global um, professional services group that did all that work. And so when we were acquired by HPE in late 2017, early 2018, we were really running into some problems. And what I mean by problems is this, is that we said, hey, we're going to close a data center. That was this, that was the motion, right? We're closing data centers. Uh, that really never happened. Okay. <laughs> Let's just be, they, they don't say that anymore, right? They, <laughs> they looked to, to try to get that done. But the problem was this, they were able to move the systems of, of what we call engagement. Systems of engagement are websites, mobile applications, very scalable, very elastic stuff that you see that are in micro services structures, cloud native architectures, uh, highly based in container technologies, those type of things. Okay, that's happened, all right? What was durable though was the systems of record. The systems of record are very durable, five nines or better, built over decades that run the global economy. Okay, they are the things that are in place that have mass, and I call them the centers of the universe, right? They, they are the sun and all these other things orbit around them, right? And those weren't moving. We, the business would say, time out, You're, you wanna move what? Okay. And they go, nah, nah, figure something else out. Right. And so they kept on trying and trying and trying. And anyways, but so we got acquired by HPE and after about six, eight months, we put together this proposal and we sent it over to Antonio Neri, the president and uh, I mean, excuse me, the CEO at the time, as well as our president um, uh, who was running the global hybrid IT. And we said, Hey, here's the problem. HPE is uniquely positioned to bring the cloud experience to that systems of record and to get the agility that the business units need to act in a much more agile way without having to do all of the things that the classic legacy IT organizations were getting bashed about. Yeah. Okay. And so 
we started executing on that. So we put together that plan. And over the last two and a half years, three years or so, we've been executing on GreenLake being the cloud experience that is being put into data centers, co-location facilities, uh, what we call the, the managed service providers, as well as any of the edge locations. And when I say edge, I mean, you know, smaller form factor, a rack, maybe a half a rack size, uh, highly focused compute that allows you to take action on data at that location, like a discrete manufacturing plant um, or as a medical facility, whatever that happens to be. But we bring that cloud experience, meaning that we consume the cloud. We are able to deploy compute network and, and storage in a software defined way. We're able to uh, deploy applications that are run that can be run immediately in those locations, a cloud experience. And that's what GreenLake is. It solves that very durable Data cannot be moved. Hey, the last time I checked, the fastest way to ship a bunch of data is still on the back of a UPS truck. Okay. So, right, you load up all your stuff and you move it. So, that's the reality. We got sovereignty laws, we got real issues around data governance that are challenging. So, moving that stuff is very risky. And so, you know, that's what the niche that GreenLake is serving. And we think we know. We've hit, we've hit it, right? Now it's about how do we continue to build on our momentum? We've, we've done very well with GreenLake and we continue to do very well. And so um, I, I, I'm asking, I mean, I'm telling your, your audience here who, are, who are really want that big business agility, you don't have to go through all the hoops that are necessary to get the public cloud to get what you're looking for when you're looking for a platform that's going to solve these problems. Well, Robert, one of the things that was inherent too in what you're saying is the speed at which this can happen, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, at any point, you know, businesses making a shift like this would say, well, how long is this going to take? And they'd prefer sooner rather than later. But in today's world, um, there's just no time for one of these 18 to 24 month, you know, uh, endless rolling projects like that. So how uh, is HP GreenLake able to compress time here and deliver that sort of breakthrough in a, a, a time frame that's acceptable and appealing to customers today? That, that's a, a great question. One of the, one of the challenges that um, a business unit is going to face is access to data. Right. So that, that's the first thing they're going to want to say, hey, give me access to this database. Give me access to these S3 buckets. Give me access to these files, wherever the data is located. And it's often not in a format that they're used to using. And it's got to be formatted, put in place, put appropriate metadata on it, that type of thing. It's got to be structured in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they will go through this migration process and convert it, et cetera, go through all the regulatory issues, uh, the, the, the masking issues, all the, the data ops problems and move it to a public cloud. Mm -hmm. That could take a few months to, you know, a year to get to the point where the business unit is at least at a point now where they can use that data to do something that's meaningful to go put, or the business unit can start from scratch and start moving and start collecting data locally on the public cloud, which doesn't do anything for the existing clientele or the opportunities there. So you got this problem, okay? You still got to do this work. What HPE GreenLake does is puts the platform next to the data, okay? And when you put it next to the data, you have the opportunity to access the data in its native state, mm -hmm. okay? And so the hoops that you have to run through from a governance, an operational point of view, a security point of view, a compliance point of view are, are eliminated because you're still within the four walls of your organization. Now you're just dealing with how do I mask and put the data in a way that my, my community needs it for the, the applications that I want to run. Well, uh, HPE GreenLake has a number of services and software that do those things out of the box today. Our partner community and the ISV community and the software applications that we offer also run in public cloud, but they also run on premises. Okay. They both run at the same location. So if you're already used to using a particular Spark, plus Spark set of applications for your data scientists, your community, those can run right next to the data already today. So that's just one use case. But let's say that you're trying to do something a little bit more um, uh, spread out, distributed, 
say you're a discrete manufacturer, you have a centralized system and you have 15 manufacturing locations, but none of them are tied together any kind of data motion way. Out of the box, HPE GreenLake has our data fabric, which allows you to have a very, very robust file system across all of those that is super easy to administer and very, very durable, which connects all of these platforms together in a way that's pretty much um, that you would expect in the public cloud if you were going between various locations. They have that as part of their native structure. You can get that in premises now today. So these are some of the things that you see showing up in the, in the platforms that would help a business to move faster without those, those rules that have to happen when you move over to public cloud. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert, you know, uh, one of the promises of the cloud, not always fulfilled, but it is a great promise here is, you know, we're we're going to it's less so about, you know, here's how we, the tech vendor are offering it. You, the customer, have to use, you know, our version of it. Uh, right. Instead, it's sort of come the other way. And I, I love that line from GreenLake about your cloud, your way. What mm-hmm. does that mean? Why is that important? Yeah. So <laughs> one of the most common things we received as a feedback from when I was running the CTP organization with our clients is how do I mitigate my risk of lock-in? Uh-huh. Well, you know, there's always lock-in. There's always some degree of it. it depends on your mindfulness of it, right? So You can say the ultimate lock-in is that I'm using all the native APIs. I'm using all the native services of an Azure at a GCP or an AWS, uh, an IBM or Oracle, whatever it is, Alibaba. That cloud has APIs or programming interfaces that if your developers or your business units or whatever point to those and start using them, it's going to be very hard to unlock yourself out of that. And you're going to be locked in. That's just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. So, that abstraction has happened over the last three or four years through native open source software. So you're seeing things like Kubernetes, which is an orchestration platform, and the, and the application structure and how you build them in containers has given us a degree of abstraction, given us a degree of non-lock-in. Uh, HPE GreenLake has adopted that strategy of open source across the board. Yep. Okay, just standardization. So if you write applications in a cloud native way and you have limited or completely removed the calls to the cloud you're on. So if you've written Lambda functions, which run on Amazon and they're part of your application, you've got, you're locked in, you're there. But if you haven't, and you've used it in a more cloud native open source way, that application will run absolutely on GreenLake today, period. We support all of the open source standards out of the box. Okay. So, and we support it from a runtime 24 by seven. And so that abstraction really helps. The other thing that's really pretty cool, and we're going to demonstrate this here in our discover show coming up is our, our, what I refer to as that data fabric. I talked to it spans all of the public clouds. So we'll show a file system that's connected to a Google to an Azure to an AWS and on-premises and an edge location, all sharing the same data in real time. Uh Okay. Now that, you know, people kind of go, well, why would I need to do that? Well, because the business units want choice. Yeah. There is no one all in cloud motion. Everybody has everything. Yeah. You know this, Bob, right? Everybody's got one of Azure, one of GCP, one of AWS, one of they all have four or five clouds. What if it's okay? Well, right? I think you know, Robert, uh, it, it it goes back to you know something you said a minute ago there, which is um, you know, alluding to this notion if the world the business world, the IT world was started 10 years ago. This would all be easy, but it wasn't. And That's we've right. got, you know, these uh, almost like archaeological sites of different sort of levels That's of stuff. a great way to say it. How to be dealt with, right? Because yep. businesses, they, they don't have a choice about moving into the digital future. They have to be able to do that. And along those lines, Robert, one thing, a line that I loved from uh, GreenLake was, you know, its ability to help businesses fuel their decision velocity, mm-hmm. right? So it, this isn't just like, hey, I can get an IT project done more quickly, but you are helping that then go beyond that to now you're helping business people make the better decisions more quickly and then reap the rewards from that. How does that happen? 
That's a great, great question. How do, how do we enable the business velocity? Which in, so let's, let's just take a use case that I know I'm going to talk about a medical um, company as a hospital that has two data centers and they have multiple satellite offices that are doing MRI and x-rays. Okay. And one of the challenges they have is that a lot of times the MRIs or the x-rays are done inappropriate, not inappropriate. They need to be done over again and repeated again because there's a, it didn't come out right. It's not focused. They can't analyze it. It's like that. And just a very simple cleanup process through an, an a, a machine learning algorithm improve the quality substantially. And then an outcome can be determined. They just, the, the person who's reviewing it goes, oh, that's much clearer. I can see that much, much better. And they don't have to reshoot it. They don't have to like that. So the outcomes are, are much faster. Well, it turned out to do that, they turned to HPE and what they did was put a data science group, a machine learning group at the central hospital location where the data center was. But all of the facilities are out there. And what they did is they put this underlying data fabric, the Esmeralda data fabric underneath it. And every time that they had a new update to their model, that they were working on. These were the scientists and the, the, the people working on them, the, working with the doctor scientists together. They would push it into GitHub, which is where the repository for the code was. It would, the, the system would kick off and the data fabric would automatically push out the new model to all the locations on behalf. And the scientists would never know if a new one, unless they were told if an email or something like that came out. And then the new model would be doing the work and anytime the new model found something that didn't fit, it didn't understand what to do with it, they call them anomalies, yep. it would drop it into another part of the data fabric, which would route that image right back into the central location where the scientists would start seeing the outliers and be able to put it back in again. And it was this continuous, automated, fully managed data motion of models going out, testing anomalies brought back in over and over and over again that accelerates outcomes every time. Now take that same thing and put it to quality to manufacturing. Take that same thing and put it into the airline industry. Take that same thing and put it into the 5G telco world, right? That's it. Yeah. Gosh, because you know, Robert, you hear so often about uh, data scientists saying things like, you know, I'm so excited about the potential of the work we could do here, but the first thing is I've got to spend 70% of my time, 80% cleaning things up, getting to yep. this point, right? Where they're doing, you know, you, you've got uh, an artist, uh, you know, painting the basement floor. It, it doesn't seem like the best. It's so better, true. Better way. You've described that. So, Robert, um, another line from GreenLake that I really like was modernize without compromise. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, we see today, you've described it, you know, wonderfully here, this um, mishmash of things that companies have to deal with. I mean, it's, it's been built up, uh, things that were done for a certain point 20 years ago, they were optimized for that time, and they're going to try to work around that now. And I also think that um, I view, uh, you know, maybe Robert, I'm being too artsy fartsy about this, but I think the cloud can really be an engine of reimagination and as you've described here, acceleration and innovation. So would you would you talk a little bit about that modernize without compromise? Because um, it seems that that is the sort of attribute that customers are looking for today. They don't want to say, I was able to modernize things, but boy, it sort of took my unique way of looking at the world or business opportunities out of the picture. So how's that, how does that magic come together? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I, I have to say that to, to meet that um, desired outcome of modernize without compromise, you really have to know your customers. You really have to understand the clients you're dealing with, right? Because every use case, every vertical, every place that you're dealing with, they're going to have a different set of use cases. So for example, we deal with a lot of organizations that have what are called dark sites. Mm -hmm. Stuff goes on behind the, the, the wall that they simply do not want our little fingers in, okay? For any reason, all right? And so HPE delivers a lot to that world of whether it's sovereign, like in the, the country of Australia, they literally have a rule that says no medical uh, records leave this country. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you enforce that? You have, you have to have, you have to have turn this over to them and let, and have an automated operation to make that happen. So we're having to meet that need for that client without the compromise. So that, that's very important there. Here's another one I think is really interesting. Um, through our partnership with Intel, we, we've been able to provide um, a silicon on demand in GreenLake. And what does that mean? That means that if you purchase equipment from us into the GreenLake process and as a service, we will load up all of the chipsets and the the cores and stuff like that, and they can sit dark until you need them and you don't get charged for it. And this this is breakthrough on premises. I mean, if think about that, what if you had another, you know, 248 or another, you know, X number of cores sitting there that you could light up for a period of two weeks and then shut back down and only pay for that period of time. <laughs> now, flat out, that is a capability where you could create enough headroom that the public cloud can never match that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're doing something like settling the bond market, okay, you're resolving transactions in a large hedge fund, okay, where you need explosive head, headroom and then bring it back down over a period of maybe the hours or days, and you can light it up and then turn it back off again. This is real power. Mm-hmm. And we meet the needs of our clients to make that happen. That's just on the silicon and hardware side. I'm not even talking about on the software and comp- um, components that would go on top of that. So here's the other part. I want to answer this question because it's super important. Many of our clients may not even be in the position to take advantage of all of this data stuff that we're talking about. They just want to be able to better manage their platforms, their data centers, and their edge locations in a way that allows them to move quicker, more predictable, and allow for headroom and scalability based on their business needs. Just in the hardware side, they've got all their other things necessary. They may not be a sophisticated cloud customer. Okay. This is really important, but they want that agility. GreenLake is fundamentally the HP GreenLake fundamental prop, um, uh, proposition is to bring in what you've been buying before and consume it as a service, compute network and services, and then have our, our Green Lake managed services organization take care of it for you so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. And it scales up and down based on your needs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert, it seems the world's more and more going that way, right? Because those business customers in whatever industry they're in, they've got their own very intense problems to deal with. Yes. And more of that type of uh, important, but you know, a little bit under the cover work can be done, then everybody's going to be better off. So Robert, I really have enjoyed the conversation. I'm wondering, though, before we wrap up here, uh, the edge to cloud platform from GreenLake that you've described so well, any final thoughts you want to share about the unique ways you're able to uh, help businesses move into the digital economy with success? Yeah, well, there's in the pre in this during this pandemic period, you know, just the functions or the ability for remote work was a huge piece of our GreenLake opportunity, right? Almost immediately, we saw this huge increase for remote, secured remote access, okay, mm-hmm. from a what they classically call VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, or desktop as a service. That we were able to deploy that rapidly across the globe for many, many tens of hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions, I suspect, Mm -hmm. um, that we're able to take that on. And that's not going away anytime soon. So now the new norm is that, is that, is that coming on? So you're seeing those things starting to show up all over the place. In addition to that, you, we see what we call protected infrastructure as being so critical coming out, know how your equipment was manufactured is, are the right components and the right software authenticated in that platform. So this is really important if you're driving a car nowadays, especially an autonomous vehicle car, right? You want to know, wait a second. This is not trivial. This is not trivial. So you'll be seeing from HPE continued drive towards what we call protected infrastructure. Is this a, is this true? And so in the cloud world is seriously true. You want to know that you're that everything you're, you're buying is authentic and it's not been tampered with. In addition to that, you're seeing in GreenLake much more of a 
a data, continue our shift towards data and data management around data sets. And what we mean like that is that once you have data, how do you share it in a, in a, a way that's protected, but also in an open way that allows people to get the fastest access to data that is valuable in a way that's much more community-based and has you know, con connections that people can understand. And you're seeing us separate the DBA roles, which are database administrator roles, oh. the classic IT roles from the data operation roles and separate them to them. We're going to be going much more into that area as we, as we start tracking that direction. So you'll see much more of those things come up from us. Well, Robert, it sounds like you're having a blast there and uh, you're really enjoying this adventure. Yeah, it's good times. Thanks, Bob. Well, Robert, thanks so much. This has been wonderful. And folks, thanks to all of you for being with us. This was Robert Christensen, Vice President of Strategy within the Office of the CTO at HPE GreenLake. Thanks for being with us here at Cloud Wars Live. We'll see you next time.